Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, David Lawrence Palmer, the Leo King. Hello and welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. Super stoked to be here. Awesome. Let me introduce you to everybody, starting off with my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. Hey, let me tell you something. You're really handsome for an extraterrestrial. <laughs> oh, thank you. I know. We don't have genitals, though. <laughs> he says we don't have genitals. Oh, well, you know, there are surgeries today that they can put them on. <laughs> Wonderful. A lot of, yeah. a lot of, a lot of extraterrestrials, uh, we don't know what's going on, so thank you. No, but a lot of women, you know, that are lesbian women that have sex changes, they have a pass, a big one, you know, a big ball sewn on and a big pepperoni. So they're, they're pretty good at it. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> you got to love it. Let me introduce you to the rest of the crew. Starting now, with... Wait, now you have an idea where this show goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we want to introduce you to our, uh, our, our engineer. She is in the W4CY studios in Wellington, Florida. Say hi to Danielle. Hey, Danielle. She's supposed to say hey back. No, she fainted. <laughs> she fainted. Or, or she just plugged her vibrator. Yeah, she does have that one. Too. When the good-looking ones come on, she oh, freaks yeah, she, out. She's in heaven right now. She's moaning. Oh. Oh, hey, now yeah. we hear you. Now we hear you. Let me hear you moan. This this one's a cute one. Let me hear you moan. I'm not doing that. It's really weird. <laughs> you don't think he's hot? We, uh, wait, wait, quiet. You don't think he's hot? I do think he's hot, but I'm sure he doesn't want a virtual moan. It's better <laughs> <laughs> Who wants a phone? No one. Then we've got Scotty J, the host of Rock Titan TV. He's in Philadelphia. Scotty J, say hi to David. Well, I think David is very hot. And David, good luck with these guys, man. <laughs> Seriously, good luck with these guys. Thank I'm you. I, I think I'm going to need all the luck I can get. Uh, yeah, Scott is straight with a wife. He's just pretending to be gay. <laughs> you didn't do it well enough, honey. <laughs> Oh, you know, you come on, Ronnie. Ronnie, Les come on now. You need, you need lessons on picking up a straight guy like this. Listen, you're very good looking, and I bet you're lonely at night. How about I come over one night and have a couple of drinks? <laughs> and, you know, I give you a rub down, and I know you'll make you feel good. <laughs> All right, so I, can, hold on. I can do it in a dress with a wig if you like. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Now we've got a chat a room. A chick with a dick we, is real. We have one. a chat room filled up. It's it's packed with people. We've got uh, yes. all the United States. We've got uh, yes. Australia, Belgium. Yes. We've got Germany on and all over the place. So say hi to everybody in the chat room. Yo, yo, yo. And then I you got to give I mean, a special. I think we have 172 countries we go to, 178. Right? It's 178 countries and we, we go to. They're not 178 in the chat room right now. Then I need you to say hi to Eileen, who did that great uh, oh, article. Oh, oh. Eileen's amazing. You. Eileen, I hope Beware. you're doing wonderful. Beware. There you go. All right, Beware everybody. Beware of that one. Beware. So you guys, if you've never heard of David Lawrence Palmer, he is the Leo King. His website is theleoking.com. He's a celebrity astrologer, a media spiritual influencer, uh, he produces the largest video horoscope media network and app for High Vibe TV. And he's been featured as the top astrologer in America on Yahoo, E! Entertainment Television, ABC, MTV, Style Network, National Enquirer, People Magazine, and Reality Weekly. So hello, and we're excited to talk with you. Yeah, wow. I'm stoked to be here with you both. Wow, you paid all those people to say those things about you? You must be broke. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I actually got really lucky... <laughs> and got into reality television and used that as my PR to get on all those shows. All right, first question. Do you believe in extraterrestrials? I do, but I don't believe them in the way that a lot of people think about them in the movies. I don't believe that they're physical beings. What do you think they are? I think that they are multidimensional beings. That the, Think about how a radio works. Our brains can only see certain frequencies, right? Like we can't see a cell phone right now or right. how right now the wireless to this you know, internet is streaming this to you all, that I believe that there are beings that are in these other higher frequency realms that our radio waves can hit in our brain. That's a Tesla belief. I believe that somewhere I read that Tesla said, when you die, you leave the body, you no longer need the machinery. Now you become a radio wave and everything you do is through the minds. And I firmly believe that. Now, I also yeah. believe, I believe in astrology. Arlene Dahl, who is a very dear friend of mine, and you mm. know who Arlene Dahl is. She used to write a column every day. She's yeah, a great... Where, where, where did she write for? Was it... Da um, da the Daily News, the New York mm, Times, yeah. all the New York publications. She's a very good friend of mine. And she did a chart on me years ago, and boy, was it accurate. 
Um, the stars do help us. Tell us about it. How do they help us? Well, the way that astrology works is it's, it's a true conscious understanding of what's going on. I mean, think about just being on Earth alone, right? Like we live in this like fishbowl, basically. And today, nobody's looking up at the stars anymore. They're just looking down at their cell phones where it's like the ancients. And I mean, we're just even talking about within the last, you know, couple hundred years, people were still looking up at the stars to try and understand what's going on. I mean, if you're living in this crazy fishbowl, wouldn't you want to know like what's going on? Where are you at? Where are you at in the universe? When you apply that to your own self and actually start to realize that everybody on this planet's unique. And if you look at the way that the planets work and you look at the way that just astrology is more than just planetary aspects, it's about understanding everything that was going on at that snapshot of your birth and everything that's going on at every moment that is actually happening in the universe and capsulizing that into your consciousness. You're able to be aware of what's coming up, what's going on, who you are and how life is working. I mean, every civilization used it except the ones today. And it's going really well, don't you think? <laughs> Well, you know, to coin a phrase, the movie Now Voyage is starring Betty Davis. For those of you who know who Betty Davis is, the ending line of the film is, why ask for the moon? We have the stars. And I firmly believe in we have the stars. And we do. And the stars do guide us somehow. I don't know how, but I feel that certain things, like, you know, like when our cell phones don't work and the computers go nuts, my daughter Deirdre, who's an, also a, a astrologist astrology buff mm -hmm. said that something is going on in mercury or something mercury uh, show us says mercury is in retrograde or something yeah mercury is <laughs> in ret whatever the hell that means and it interferes with all of our equipment and i definitely believe in a in a, in a wormhole or a black hole i definitely believe i believe everything that we know so far i don't i doubt nothing i know that we have captured nine di nine different ufo because a good friend of ours has a friend that worked in Area 57, is 54. it? 54. And he said that in possession right now, the United States government has nine uh, aircraft from another, another I don't planet. really think you're supposed to tell people that. No, I can say it. No, I can say it because I'm not giving names. They can there go whistle go. Dixie before I give them the fucking names. <laughs> so hold on. Let's go to him. Let's go to him. Hold but, on. No, wait a minute. They also said they have four bodies of alien people. Now, do you believe any of this? I mean, like I said previously, that I'm much I've I've only really tapped into the extraterrestrials from other dimensions. And I mean, I'm an open person like you are. I'm somebody who I, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, but I also know that there's a lot of there's a lot of prophecies that are told, whether it's through religion or ancient tradition, about some sort of false pretext to try and corner up the human race into believing this kind of alternate idea of self, right? So like, imagine if there was a ploy to have people believe in this alien life form that has all these understandings of the universe, which is actually counteractive to what it really is. So it's about being very discerning in anything in life. And that's why I'm an astrologer is right. You've got to apply science and data and mix it with the, the moral truths, the spiritual truths, and this is where we're at in society, where it's too one-sided. There's like, okay, it's all science, or, oh, no, it's just all blind religion with no factual energy. And we have to all be discerning in life with bridging both together to understand and look at both sides of it and see where is this all coming from? Is this really true? And, and who are the people that hold this info and where did they get it? And we need to know every little piece about it because it could all just be a setup to tell you this is how to live and you must put this chip in you. Uh, because this is what the aliens told us to do. And that chip is really now getting every part of your vital organs and everything in a system that's capsulizing people like sheep. Who knows? So that wouldn't be a bad thing. So in the first place, wanna... maybe we could program people to not kill other people in mass quantities like just what happened the other day. Um, I believe that um, I was raised in a, in a home with no religion my parents were both of different religions. So I feel that the, the the whole idea of Jesus Christ coming to this planet from God and being killed and uh, coming out of a cave and going back to heaven is just as 
unbelievable as an ex extraterrestrial story. Because for all we know, he could have been an extraterrestrial. Okay, who is God? We don't know who God is. God's out in the universe. Well, you right. tell me where he is in the universe. The universe is endless. So tell me more about the universe. When you, you, when you read stars, you're only reading stars in our, uh, air, in our universe. What about the other billions and billions of stars that are out there? Do they give you information? Well, one thing that we look at, first of all, when we start with astrology, is we look at a geo-based chart, Earth's chart, and what the actual look at is we have something called the ecliptic, which is where the sun and the moon every day, if you notice, when you wake up, it rises in the east and sets in the west. And if you notice, the sun and the moon are on the same path. And if you actually look behind that path at nighttime, it's the same path. You'll see the planets on that same line. So that's where we understand why we focus on those 12 zodiac belts, because they're on that ecliptic energy. And that's where we have eclipses and so forth. Going beyond that, we also use Mayan understandings, which actually looks at our galaxy itself. So if we look at our galaxy, it's on a galactic plane. On that plane, it's just the same way. It has an equator. And the way that the sun works is the sun actually dips below the plane, comes to the exact moment where it's at the equator of the plane, and then it goes above the, the it's almost like a dolphin kind of swooping mm. like this, the sun, okay? So the Mayans predicted that basically on this 22 million year, some of the data is a little off or on because science truly can't get it fully right, but every 24,000 years, there becomes one full swoop. And then it takes 22 million years to go around the whole entire galaxy, our sun with our planets going around, okay? So the whole 2012 prophecy was that we had finally made a full entire 22 million years and we started another beginning of another 24,000 year cycle at the exact point where the sun right now is in the middle of the plane of the galaxy. That's why we're able to see all this stuff. One part. Another part is it's extremely potent. But when you go into outside of our own galaxies, we don't even have... When, when NASA is starting to show you a lot of stuff, I mean, it's literally pasta on the wall, okay? So... As an astrologer, we can only take what we get, like we just saw the black hole, right? Like in the last three months for the first time. Okay, this is a big deal, right? Because we've never seen one before. It was a theory before. It was drawings before. Here's an actual picture of it. So as astrologers, the community gets together and takes a while to figure out how is that going to be meaningful and bringing meaning back to the world? Like one thing science does great is find information. But if you notice, they're not giving you meaning behind it. They're just kind of giving you data. Astrologers, which have been kind of lost through time and been castrated out, are, are the ones that help understand the meaning and bridge the historical information of when we have these different patterns and when we discover things, what kind of meaning does that mean to us as humanity? Now, do you believe in life or the world is a loop? Like as if it repeats itself? Yeah, because you guys can tell the future through astrology things that are going to happen, earthquakes, floods, or disasters, some, some do. Um, there has to be a loop, because we have had to have done this before in order for you to know what it's going to be. Do you agree with that? I'm, I'm into all that. this stuff. I'm into all this stuff. So you're not talking to a professor. You're talking to a dummy who just knows what I know. Do you believe also that planet Earth has had other civilizations millions of years ago? Yes. And I believe that if you understand just the understanding of the, like, our planetary motions, we do because we base our time off this, right? We base our, our time off the Earth and the Sun's relationship and how the rotation of, of those aspects are. But there is a point to where, and it looks like it's on a 24,000-year cycle, that we do kind of come to these kind of reset points and then even larger ones like 22 million – that yes, I believe it's like the Matrix. If you ever saw it, and and uh, the Matrix Reloaded, number two, when he sees the architect, he goes, "You've been here six times before, and you've always made this choice." And then finally, he makes a choice to go the other doorway. I believe that's what free will is—predetermined points where you have a choice, and you have a very limited choice. But that free will choice is a positive or a negative direction. Like really, that's like life in a nutshell. And you know, the more conscious or aware you are of it, you know how to take. The better path because it's always moments that build up in time in history and everything 
that always come to these cataclysmic points where it's like, oh my gosh, what do we do? And it's like, there's the free will choice. They're buildups. And there is something about repeating. And there is history repeats itself. I mean, humans and relationships repeat themselves. Like all we the all time. have these subconscious repeating aspects of ourselves that are constantly going on. Now, the so, Mayan calendar also said if the world was going to end a few years ago, and of course the world hasn't ended, uh, what made the, the calendar, I mean, the, the Mayan calendar, by the way, is that round It's the long count, yeah, the long that you, count. That most people have as ornamentation in their home. Well, it's if you read it, it as the um, experts know how to read it, it tells all in the Mayan calendar. Yeah. Now, how do you... I figured the Mayans knew this because they could barely do anything else. They ate, they ate corn, okay? They didn't have caviar. So they only knew one thing, but yet their calendar was so superior. Their calendar is used today. Yeah, it's used today. They use the Venus cycle a lot because Venus, if you ever look at it from a very kind of a, not only a geo point of view, like Venus is the brightest star. So it's the easiest one to follow. And the Venus cycle is uh, very unique to any other cycle because it creates this beautiful star pattern in our solar system. Like it's a perfect star, okay? Yeah. And so for, for tracing time periods, they're the most predictable. You know where Venus is going to be. Every eight years, it's going to be in one spot where the sun and Venus are going to cross. And that's where we have the evening star and the morning star switchovers, when Venus Cassini's the sun, it's called, when it crosses in front of the sun and gets burned out, where we can't see it for 40 days and 40 nights, that's where the Bible gets a lot of these stories from. Is exactly. 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 So hold on. So I got a chat room full you're of people. You're very smart. You're very great. You're terrific. I love you. Oh, thank you. You're, <laughs> no, you're, you're I, a bit, No, no. I like talking. Knowledge is, it's amazing. You know, I like talking to people who know my answers to my questions. I have had many friends that were... Um, psychics or astrologers and un so hold on. unfortunately they were charlatans so yeah, hold on a lot of them out there yeah. so hold on because i've got some things to say first of all we have a chat room everybody loves you they said they've never seen a supermodel astrologist before first of all so they're like digging the fact that you're gorgeous somebody wanted to know what you think of stephen hawking but hang on to that oh well um, hang on to that um also they want to know if you have a book do you have any have you written any books yeah right now i have the uh, 28, 2019 Astrology Guide Mag, the Leo King. It was at Walmart, Target. It just got pulled off shelves because it's uh, mid of 2019. Yeah, because I have one question to ask you. Yeah. I don't know that you have the answer, or if the stars can tell us this. Is Trump coming back? <laughs> So that's a very good question. I've actually made a prediction that I don't think he's going to make it through his own health issues. That I believe okay. that that he's actually coming into a health crisis, and so a lot oh. of people are looking more at impeachment or looking at he he is somebody who will not go down based off. He's a very actually intelligent man. He's got a genius chart. He's born on a lunar eclipse, the exact moment it happened. He's got Mars in the in the position on the rising sign on Regulus, the royal star, and that star with Mars always wins in any battle that it goes into. Will always win. So the only thing that could ever take, I guess, Trump down for people who want that. I'm not saying I'm somebody who wants that. I'm just, because I don't want anything. No, 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 we don't anybody. do politics. We, we never discuss who we yeah. believe in. But um, I, I do oh. believe just as an astrologer, and I've and I, in my in my magazine, I did four pages on him, and I actually just, like, as a human to a fellow human, was like, forget the politics, whatever. Like, make sure you watch your health. Make sure you watch your heart and your uh, right now, because based off his chart, he's coming to some very hard health aspects that are about to come up. And actually, so, you did that. You wrote that in, in the Eileen's article in the Hollywood Digest. I had yeah. that in. I remember reading that now, um, yeah. which is which I think is super cool. And just so you know a little bit about Ron, besides Turner Classic Movies, Ancient Aliens is his favorite show. He watches the History oh, nice. Channel. Whenever he watches TV, he always watches the History Channel. He like loves all of it. I, I am a documentary um, freak. I have been watching documentaries since they put them on television back in 1949. And he's he watches um, every Alien documentary. That I comes remember. Out. I remember Roswell, and I remember the Daily News had a photograph of an alien, a dead alien, and then suddenly it was pulled, and nobody could ever find this newspaper again. And they said it was a kite. And it was not an alien craft that crashed in Roswell. Now, I remember. It's I was, also at Studio 50. I mean, Area 51. Board, area 51. 
Was it a weather uh, balloon they were trying to call it? Yeah, well, it was an impossibility. A weather yeah. balloon can't possibly do what that craft did. Right. I was eight years old, and I was in the middle of it. And that's when I started to realize that um, the people are not smart as I think they are. Because people go to church, synagogue, and they pray to a god. I don't get it. And then here we have aliens, and they say, oh, there's no such thing as aliens. We're the only ones in the universe. How pompous to think that we are the only planet that has life. I mean, it's ridiculous. So I have a question for you. Yeah, the question you're going to ask is a great one. Ask it. How do you know it's a great one? Because you haven't had one question. Uh, I know. Well, I want to ask questions because a lot of people want to know the difference. <laughs> like we've had, we've had a couple of mediums on the show. I guess you would call them mediums or psychics or whatever. And like you don't really fall under that category. No. I don't hear you. No, no, no. I, he does so not. Let me, let me talk. I can. I get nervous. I, I know. Well, I, he doesn't. I don't see you like because av- I've read. I went online. I googled you. I looked at everything that's on you. I looked to see if people th- wrote things like, "Oh, he's a fraud. He's a fake." I mean, your press is really, really good. There's nobody says anything bad about you. Well, Nobody says that you're. I, not- I have to interrupt wait, wait, something. Let me no, wait. I, I know I have to interrupt. He's a scientist in my book. He's a scientist, and he's not a charlatan. Well, he mixes science. No, with he's it. a scientist because he knows okay, but let me exactly. Ask my question. He knows exactly where it's We're at. We're married. We fight like this all the time, so don't worry about it. Um, so, so what I want to know though is like because. Because I, I I read your interview with in the Hollywood Digest and I googled all kinds of things on you and you know it took you a long time for you to tell people that you were an astrologist and like what is the kind of like the difference between a celebrity astrologist and like let's say like Joe psychic person like you know from the psychic network or some shit. <laughs> well, I think there's a there's a big difference in all of it as being as one. Being an astrologer has data that we yes. are using. So like here's some tarot cards right here, right? Okay, so there's a lot of people that do tarot, and I do tarot myself, but I use it as a um, as something after the astrology because one thing about astrology is you cannot control it. A human cannot control the planet's positions. Like we can, I cannot tell somebody like, I'm sorry, Jupiter is going to be here in four weeks, and like there's no way for me to stop it. Where somebody can take a card and kind of go, oh, like I don't like that card. Like, you know what I mean? Like, or let me just do another <laughs> one. They, they're kind of creating, and I'm not saying there's anything against tarot because I look at it as like a, like kind of like a confirmation to what the astrology says, right? Yes. Like I'm a believer more in that the universe is an actual clockwork that is actually divine. I believe in divinity. I believe that everything is on divine timing. I believe that the universe has a beautiful way of already knowing what it's doing. And we just have to sit back and observe and watch the beauty happen and, be conscious of it. Whereas like, I think that some psychics are almost trying to prove themselves too much. There's old codes that go back thousands of years of people who practice this stuff. You just don't go to somebody and tell them like, like at a mall, like, Hey, I need to talk to you right now. Like you, you've got some weird thing going on. You know what I mean? It's like that's <laughs> evading people's privacy. It's evading people's space. And that's how you tell a charlatan right away is number one, they're not going to just come up to you and be like, you need help. Like, you know what I mean? Number one, it has to be asked. The question needs to be asked to you. And I, I would I would say that the original amazing psychic work, like Nostradamus was a true psychic astrologer. He Absolutely. was hired by the queen, like uh, Catherine, and he was real. He was a real deal because he took it to the science. He went to school as a child and studied astrology first, and he did all these predictions and stuff, and a lot of them have come true. And he, I mean, you got to remember, this guy was working not with no computers or nothing, like literally yes. like writing down charts like on hand, you know? So I I would say that the celebrity thing, though, is that astrologers at one point in history were a celebrity themselves, right? It was a celebrity to be an astrologer. Like, it's like the astrologers here. But in today's society, it kind of got like, oh, my God, like you are in the weird corner now. And now we have all these people that I think celebrities are great. But it's like, I think that now the way that the world's going the astrology needs to come back and be a celebrity back into the entertainment world, in the real world, in the in the news world, and in the political world, and everything to give that middle viewpoint that everybody's not looking at. Because, I agree. Because without that, that's what's missing. You know, it's like being like now it's the court jester when that was never who it was. They're throwing astrologers as a court jester, but that's not what an astrologer is. You know, like to the king and the queen always, that was the number one person next to them. Not yes. the, okay. you know, so many, the so hand many. of the page of Queen like Game of Thrones tried to do. 
but it would be kind of like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, but that person, you know, we put prop, you know, Tyrion up as that kind of like, ooh. But it's like, did he really have any information except for just like what his mind thought? There's a lot more to the mind when you that's go into the, that's a my spiritual next question. mind. That's my next question. Most people think the tower cards are magic. They're not magic. I have read tower cards for many, many years. My grandmother in Italy had a dream book. 300 year old dream book and every morning she'd wake up and she'd read her dream book and she could predict things so i have sort of a very very uh intuitive family background i have read tarot cards and i have been correct i predicted a fire in a friend of mine's house and uh, his dog dying and it exactly happened i told my daughters where they would be living in la and what their apartment looked like even to the beams in the ceiling. So yes, we all have some kind of an intuitive intuitive yeah. something in us. A crystal ball you look into, it doesn't give you answers, but it gives your mind something that you see. So you create with your mind what you see and you tell the person. So all of you out there that go to psychics and spend all that money, don't. Half of them are phonies. They they con you. They know how to work you. They know how to say, well, yeah, isn't that so? You Oh, yeah, blue, blue. Yeah, your father was a, a cop, right? Yeah. You know, they pick up on things. They're trained well at doing it. Uh, a good, good guy like the guy we have on our show today probably could give you one of the best uh, readings you'll ever get due to your birthday, the time of your birth, and possibly sometimes. Which he does that, you the guys. The end of your life. I know Cary Grant uh, the famous actor w was told by an astrologist the year and the day he was going to die, and he was terrified of that all of his life. And he went, uh, he underwent LSD and a psychiatrist to sort of get rid of those things. Hang on, let's tell him that though. So everybody, first of all, because if if you want to find out a lot more about David Lawrence Palmer, the Leo King, first of all, you can follow him on Twitter at the Leo King Dumb. And his website is theleoking.com, and he has times where you can book him for all kinds of things. And you can find out everything he does with his studio back there and the television stuff. So tell us, what is something, uh, what is something um, that you predicted, like, in the past that came true that everybody knows about? Well, there's, there's two different types of prediction. There's okay. predictions about kind of, like, where we are all. A lot of people watch me because I'm tapping into their inner soul and knowing where the shifts are going in life with, with different relationships in their personal life and so forth. So there's personal astrology prediction that is like I am hitting people every day and every week with my shows that are like telling them where the consciousness is evolving. They can feel the track of things in their life going in this direction and, and, right, and riding the right wave in life. But if we go to actual predictions in the world – especially since I'm a celebrity astrologer, we could start with, I was on Kiki Palmer and, and BET and I had to do some celebrity couples. And so they brought up Beyonce and they brought up uh, um, Jay-Z. And I'm like, no, this is not good. And I remember BET being tripped out. Like, because they're B -E if you're on BET, a lot of the BET stars are BET, like actual, like they sign contracts to be like actual stars. So they don't like want to ever inhibit anything negative. And I'm like, yeah, these two, this relationship just is not good. 2015 is not looking good. They're, and so they really did a good job of saying, well, yeah, it looks like they'll go through some, some troubles, but you know, they'll be all right. And look what happened. Oh, like, he I, cheated on her. Yeah, he cheated on her. <laughs> and then they made a whole thing. And then this year, oh my gosh, like Beyonce's Venus is getting attacked extremely right now by Saturn and by Pluto. So there is like this secret going on like this trying to hold this story together that i'm sorry to say like it is all like you know like how many times can you do can you just keep putting salt on the wound before gang green has to come and you have to cut this thing off that's that <laughs> relationship and you know like i'm I, and that's what i'm predicting like we are going to see the end of that that relationship and i'm not somebody that wants to be like negative and i'm not somebody but you know people ask me right if a, if a network asks me for what they believe about a celebrity couple Okay, I'm going to give it to you, to you, raw and real, because if you're in this work, you cannot get emotional about it because the original part of astrology is hermeticism and alchemy. And you need to go back hundreds of years and even thousands of years to understand this stuff that the only under way to un truly understand the universe is to get your emotions out of it because everybody is so sensitive today and everybody gets too emotional about their positions in their life or what's, uh, you know, and they're not looking from a place of both point of a neutral view. And if you don't have a neutral view, Guess what? You're you're screwed this life because you're emotionally attached to it and you're going to stay in your same conscious loops that are going to hold you back. 
So that was one quick prediction that's on television that's like, okay, kabam. Um, in my magazine this year, I predicted that the oil prices would go to their lowest and then it would swing up and down, but it would go to its lowest. It did. It, it's lowest since over 20 years this year. Okay. And that was easy to predict based on just where things were going with Uranus moving into Taurus and commodities and oil and all this stuff. Like, and I also said that the tech market would take a huge boom and the tech market has taken a huge, like, I mean, negative boom, you know, it's gone down because we've reached this pinnacle spot where technology is not actually as exciting as what we think it's going to be. We are going to be moving back to the 1930s based off where Uranus is. And we are going to be looking back at what commodities are, where the value things are. We obviously have a money problem in the whole entire world right now that needs to be somewhat solved. So there is a little bit of the technology with, with some of this Bitcoin and all that stuff and, and crypto technology. But I really believe that you're going to see that it's actually going to be like, what is going to be the new commodity? There's going to be some form of an actual physical commodity that's going to be needed for the world that is going to pop out. And that's why you're seeing all the right now, all these crazy trade deals around the whole world. It's not just Trump. It's the whole world. You can see the whole world's freaking out right now. The Fed just freaked out a week and a half ago and lowered the rates because everybody knows that the money situation is getting really weird. Um, another prediction that uh, I mean, I, there's so many random predictions, but I do a no, lot I love it. of, course, of celebrity love it. couple ones. So like they just have this Cole and um, what's her name? Um, Oh, Cole, he's the young, they're the young couple, Cole and, um, Oh um, yeah, 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 from Cole, uh, Riverdale, Cole Sprouse. From, from Riverdale. And then what's her name though? Uh, Cole and, um, oh, oh gosh. Reinhardt. Right. Lily, Reinhardt. Yeah, uh, Lily, Lily Reinhardt. So looked at their charts for 17. I do, I do 17s like celebrity astrology, like as far as their couples. And 17 I magazine article, that is everybody. And I did an article magazine. on April 29th that you can look in the news. It's on there. And I said that this relationship, they're good friends and everything, but lovers, nah, this doesn't look good. And there's some sort of weird secret going on. And I said that it's really not going to last. Just two weeks ago, there was a bunch of sources that said, yeah, they broke up. Best friends had said that. And then she came out and said, you need to know who your sources are, right? But obviously there's something going on weird. And I even said, there's some sort of secret behind these back doors and that a lot of it is like, you know, like they're lost in the role in the show and trying to play that in real life. And it's not really working. Right. I think it's just like it used to be back like when in the 50s and 60s where the studios made the couples be together to promote whatever they were doing. And I think that's totally what it is with Riverdale. No, mostly in my day, the Barbara Stanwyck was a lesbian and an outrageous lesbian, a bull dyke in her real world. And she married Robert Taylor, and it's called a lavender marriage. There were many lavender marriages in Hollywood because in those days, if they found out you were homosexual, you were out of the business. I mean, nobody right. could tolerate a Rock Hudson being a, a, a bottom boy. I mean, he's a top butch number. You know, he's going to make every woman melt. So that was what it was, mostly sexual, more than it was uh, uh, scandalous. Oh, I think this is, though, I, I don't think either one of them are gay. No, I nobody just really gave a like, No, no one cared in, in Hollywood back then if they got divorced. He might, I'm t I'm, you might have a point. With Cole, there's some sort of weird secret. He's born with Venus square Pluto, which is a secret way of how he, what he loves and what he likes. But he, he's, he, he's got some intense secrets. And I, that's what I say. I can't always. wait. I can't wait to may, find may, out what may, they are. It's my may, favorite show. Riverdale is well, one of my favorite maybe, shows. Maybe he's in love with the milkman. You never know. Everybody you never actually, know. We've, we've had several. We had Skeet Ulrich on our show before he was on Riverdale, uh, and uh, he was a great guest. We had a freaking like blast with him, and I love this. Do you watch the show? But uh, yeah, I've watched a couple. I mean, I've watched. No, I don't. <laughs> but I've, I've, like, <laughs> I've seen it for a second. You know what I mean? But I don't really. You know, when I when I do some of these people, I don't know who they are, and I actually don't go look them up. I just literally go, okay, like let me look at the astrology. And sometimes that people take it really. That's what I'm saying. Emotions in this work are not good yes. because, like, when I did Zayn Malik and Gigi Hajid, I didn't know who they were. So I just like they just you know send me these names. I look up their birthdays. And then I just plug it all in and I say, oh, this Zayn Malik guy is not looking like he's going through a good time in his life. It's very destructive. It's uh, very toxic masculine. Like it's it's really intense. And then I got like tweeted out by his whole fan base that I was a xenophobic, that I was um, I was <laughs> and I didn't know he was Muslim or not Muslim. I don't even know. I'm just looking at a chart, you know, and people are like, because I say something that's not that great. 
like, blah, you know, like, like I'm this, I'm that, and I'm like, oh my God, whatever. I'm just like doing a chart. I don't know who this person That's is. That's funny. You know? See, Ron won't, wouldn't know who he is either, but like, I'm, I'm not a clue. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a boy band fan. So like, I've always liked all the boy well, band I guys. I wanted to say in the prediction thing, I would say that the biggest prediction I made, which a lot of the astrology community looked really dumb in 2016 because of the election. Um, a lot of them went with more of what they were not feeling through the astrology, like the main organizations, there's, there's about five organizations in astrology, right? And they made predictions publicly about who the president and the whole panel said Hillary Clinton. I came out in 2015 at the end of it and said, it's going to be Donald Trump. And, and this was just off astrology, not anything biased of anything dealing with, again, when you do it in astrology, you have to separate from emotion. You have to just look at data, right? So literally it was like, this guy's born on a lunar eclipse. He's born with aspects that are some of the most rare I've ever seen in any chart in the world. So it's like literally like he's going to beat her. And she had a karma about not being – her life karma is about not using her relationships to get where she needed to. Like let's be honest. If she really was in this for – you know, the political aspect, she would have divorced Bill the second that he was banging a girl in, in, in his home state when he became governor. But she stayed. Then Monica Lewinsky, she stayed. Then she got with Obama. She went against Obama, but w then went on to his team. So she used all the people that really she really did not like. And being a Scorpio that she is and being with people you don't like is the worst thing in the world for you to ever do in your life. So they are <laughs> destined for her to lose because she's the opposite of what she projects out because she's actually not living in her truth. That's absolutely correct. Now, I was born May 28, 1940, at 430 in the morning. So mm -hmm. now tell me, I'm going to live to be 100. I'm gorgeous. First of all, I'm going to get better tell looking. Tell how old with you are. A. Why should I tell him how old I am? I'm going to try to date him if he's gay. Oh, he can figure it out. You just told, <laughs> you just told him 1940 anyway. Yeah, I'm 79. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, I do know his birthday. I do know. 79 years old and, and still going. Um well, you're a Gemini, and, and that's the best part is, you know what, you will always stay youthful and excited. You, once your mind's constantly stimulating, that's what you need. And if anybody tries to inhibit that. That's like, what I tell then, Jimmy all the time. Screwed. Because that's what keeps a Gemini alive. And that's what keeps is the simulation in the mind and constantly wanting to know more. And you get, if you get bored, it's over. You know what I mean? Like, this I, is I just can't like, get bored. No, I, I'm not allowed. He can't sit for three I, hours. No, I need to keep learning. <laughs> Yeah. I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly creating. I have learned to paint portraits. I've learned to do cement work, uh, electric work. I, I'm learning all the time. Even at my age now, I'm learning. Uh, I have to learn. Otherwise, I, as you, you're totally correct. And Jimmy doesn't understand sometimes when I'm a little moody and frustrated is because nothing is happening in my brain. So my brain keeps reminiscing all the old shit, which has been done. It's boring. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I've done that before. Well, and and I the, think if you go back in your life, if you look at around 2016, actually into 2017, you had Neptune square your son, which is a very weird, but it's a very kind of like, you're seeing the most spiritual realm. It's almost like you got tapped into the universe, the deepest you ever been in 2016 into 2017. And now these last two years, it's like you're processing so much data that came at you. It was almost like the screen off the universe came off and just went exactly. like all the cosmic rays. And there's this like excitement right now for you that you've gotten mm -hmm. so much downloads and information from all these things. And this is where you've changed your energy and made a huge change in your own personal life in the last three years, I would say. I, st I started off in movies and did a lot of television, you know, television series. And then my my acting just didn't work anymore. Not for me and not for anybody. So I went ahead. I had to support two children. So mm. I had went ahead and, and continued being a, a good hairdresser who made a lot of money. Now, my new energy is I've shot three movies. I have four or five more coming up. And I'm excited about it because I play different characters in every movie. That's and exciting. that's kind of... Yeah, that's keeping me alive, and I intend to be alive as long as I shoot these films. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good because Neptune is what the media is, and what's interesting is in 2016 during the election, there was what we call the North and the South node, or in, in Eastern astrology, it's called Rahu and Ketu. These are these invisible knots, since node in Latin means knot. 
There's invisible knots in our on our ecliptic, which is again the the area that you see every day. It doesn't matter where you're at in the world. It's it's an invisible line. The sun and the moon don't just like pop up in another part of Earth every day, if that makes sense. They're always going to show up on this same line. Now there's an invisible spot that we can't see that moves every 18 months. It moves into another 30 degree aspect or, or spot, and that's where we know when the sun and the moon meet at that spot, there's going to be an eclipse. Now that south part of that access point which is usually a very delusional very like do not go this direction kind of like don't go south we get a lot of these terms from astrology like our hour comes from you know horus and where horus is on the horizon horus's zone which is the egyptian son of god but it's the sun you know what i mean like the actual sun so long story short is that election was neptune which is the media, and it also can be used as the Great Oz and with the South Node there. So there was a lot of confusion about the whole election, and there's been a lot of it trying to be figured out. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to get – the more you try to unravel this mess, it's the deepest, weirdest deception of all time. You don't know who or what or what's going to – it's like everybody's losing their mind about it because it's literally the most biggest, you know, charade of all time, and it's so deep the layers. People are like – you could keep digging and you're going to, there's going to be somebody that's glossing that over and then somebody that's glossing that over because that period that's a once in a, you know, a lifetime. And more importantly, because Neptune is in its home sign of Pisces, Neptune's on a 165 year orbit around the sun. So we're in, living in a time that was of the last time. It, and what's ironic, it was found in 1848 and then it entered into Pisces in 1849 that was the gold rush. Everybody, oh my God, I'm going to go find gold. And then what did they get? Levi's. They didn't get fucking gold. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and, then, and then everybody started to be very divisive in the country. That whole buildup, because Neptune to take 30 degrees to go through a sign is about a 15 or 16 year transit. And you know what? Look at what happened in 1861. We had civil war. And right now we're at the point in where we were at basically in the middle of the 1850s right now, when the whole country started getting divisive. And started to get really intense and also alcoholism. People would wake up in the morning in the 1850s and drink cider like it was normal like that. And then for lunch, you drink cider and then you would just get you would just that was normal. You could go to work and drink back in the day, but you wouldn't go to like a job like we have today and clock in. You know, you worked on your fucking farm or wherever you were at. And like people are <laughs> like, where do you think the heroin problem is coming from right now? Where do you think, all, you know, there's a lot of things that if people are start to, starting to see. It's not. It's like, you know, we could blame it on this. We could blame it on this. But when you use astrology, you can be like, wait, these are the times we're in. Okay, this is going to play out. Like people are like, I, it blows my mind that people just want to just put the blame on this and blame on this. And everybody in the politics are trying to figure it out through all this shit, both left and right. And they're not like looking at, well, this is the energy. And like, what if we were all aware of it? And what if we actually could change the world by being aware of this? And 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 instead of continuing to find the person that caused it opposed to realizing that maybe there's an, uh, a, a natural cause to the, these things and how do we deal with them opposed to everybody keeping to try and put the blame on someone else and get the big spot to say that they called it out or whatever. And then like say they can fix it, but like you're going to have to know what the universe is doing to fix it. Why would you go up against a big tidal wave and say that you're going to paddle out and swim when you know you're going to get, pounded you would maybe be like <laughs> why don't i take a plane and puddle jump over it and then fucking go you know what i mean like the chat room loves you first you of all. are an amazing they're man. all saying they're all saying you should run for president you need to be on a regular tv series um how do people see you more often because i know you have a youtube page what's your youtube page under or how do they get to your youtube page my youtube page is the leo king and i do a lot on there and do a lot of live streams here in the studio and then the big thing is high vibe tv dot tv uh we have an apple tv app you know roku I ios android and then we have um and, and i do about 24 videos i do my daily horoscopes my weekly horoscopes uh i do a lot of special shows on there so people have been watching me every day for seven and a half years i've done a video horoscope for seven and a half years over ten thousand videos and then i go on all the networks and talk and do that for more of the getting astrology to the masses to wake people up to have them see that this is not just some bullshit but this is actually the real way that the ancients and the actual civilizations worked. Made sense. Yeah, like 
So, so how do they go? It's, it's, it's highvibe.tv? Yeah, highvibe.tv. And then we have awesome nine other people on there that I have talked with and worked with my, you know, for a long time in this industry. And they do other divination stuff and wellness stuff. And we're also teaching people art. And we're teaching people to find their courage again and to live in a higher vibration in their life and positivity. Because it's needed right now more than ever. Positivity. You said my word. I preach it on Facebook, on every, every interview that I do. I tell people you have a choice. You could think negatively or you could think positively. Uh, use the positive. The negative just gets you nowhere. Uh, no, I don't care who you are, what you do. The minute you start to think negative, it's over. And so I, they and, delete and you it's or watch you. E <laughs> it's such an easy math. You know, it's an easy math. I don't know why people can't figure it out. Uh, why must you go through life negating, constantly negating and putting down and insulting human beings, bullying like President Trump. The bullying of President Trump is outrageous. We would never do that to President Franklin Delano Roosevelt or to Truman or to any of our presidents the way they want to hate him and it, his wife is a whore and his kids are this and how dare you do that to another human being i'm not a trump supporter i don't tell you my politics but i feel bad for any human being that's in the public eye that has to be put through such horrific crap dislike him for his politics absolutely say that trump can't run a country say what you want but don't say that his wife is a porno lesbian whore. There's a little boy there. There's a little boy there who has to hear this at school. A little boy there that who loves his mom just like you love your mother. And yeah. you don't want to hear your mother being called a lesbian whore, a porn queen. I mean, stop this crap already. Do positive. Well, Mr. Trump, you... Mr. Trump, make the country better. That's positive. And I think you bring up a great point. And I think that what's happened, though, and, and this is where you have to go back to the 1850s and we're going through the same alignments right now of the 1850s. And what's interesting at that time was it was very divisive. Back then there was no, of course, television and the newspaper was like, you know, not a thing really. So it was pamphlets and it was political cartoons at their height. And it was all about showing like in 1852, there was the election of Pierce who became the president of the Democrats. And it was the end of the Whig party. That was the last Whig party that went up against Pierce. But he was known as one of the worst presidents because he took both sides. He was like for slavery and against slavery. So like he kind of was a, he kind of helped create the divisiveness when he took both sides. Sometimes you have to take a side, but also at the time, that was a time where everybody attacked everybody. Like you're weaker you, because the Whig party candidate was like a commander in the army and they like went off, like he's one of the main commanders. And then, you know, it's like, you're weak, you're weak, you're weak. There's like this kind of weird element where people start like just becoming like, their unconscious behaviors just start throwing themselves out by not watching about how whatever they do with drugs or alcohol or things like that. That's what Neptune does is it, it makes people be like, are you in a positive aware space or you are just completely numbed out and you are not paying attention to what you're doing. And that creates chaos. Well, that president, that person who you're talking about a president, right? Yeah. And Pierce's whole entire, yeah, yeah. Today his he whole would have entire been cabinet is what seceded from the union years later. Well, he would have been crucified today. Today, yeah. we feel that we have the right to say whatever we want. No one has filters anymore, including myself. But I, I don't use a filter on the show because it's humorous. It's funny. Right. Yeah. But the minute you stop using your filter and you stop realizing that your neighbor or your friend is a human being with feelings and that what you're saying is hurtful and definitely damaging. You're a beast. I don't care who you are. You're a beast. It's get true. your, get somebody. If somebody's annoying you and you find they're idiots and they're totally out of hand, get them on the side and say, listen, I really like you a lot. You're my friend or you're my neighbor. And I don't want to do anything against you, but can I help you? Can I, can I show you something that you might need to know? Can I tell you something? Instruct people. Don't take away. Give. Give. Yeah, and I think that with free speech, there's something about moral truths that nobody's talking about moral truths, which means, yeah, free speech is there, but come from a moral, truthful space, right? Like people have forgotten something about called the responsibility that comes with these things. So yeah, there's freedom of speech, but there's a responsibility that comes with it as well. And people are like losing responsibility with anything. Now they're losing responsibility with all the rights we're given without a right. 
you need to realize that there's a responsibility that comes behind that right. And that's and, where integrity comes in. If you enjoy being negative and being rotten to another human being and saying dreadful things, if you enjoy being a bully, then check yourself out. There's something wrong with you because you're not supposed to enjoy making someone else want to commit suicide as so many people are doing now, especially in the gay world. We are losing so many teenage and uh, men. Men uh, is the number one rate of suicide. Yes. Yeah, because of demasculizing. So here's what we got to do, you guys, because we're out of time. I love you. You're coming so back. Everybody, you are coming Everybody back. in the chat room says we have to have you back because it wasn't long enough. No, though, and, you have and, great, we, and we even let you. We, ha we kept you on 15 minutes longer than and, we and, normally and, do. And, and you know why we? You know why we kept you on? You have great cheekbones. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so well, you guys, I, enjoy, I enjoy you both a lot. We can talk for days. Oh, I love you. you I guys, absolutely love you. So this is David Lawrence Palmer, you guys. He's the Leo King. His website is www. At the Leo King .com. His Twitter is at the Leo Kingdom. He's also on Facebook. You can like his Facebook page. If you want to book something with him, you can do it off of his website. Go check out his website. Also, check out highvibe.tv. You can see him on there. And and we'll definitely have you come back. We want to thank oh, you yeah, so much for coming on the show. Please come, please come back. I would You're love very to. You're super intelligent. You're a wonderful speaker. And I, I rarely ever listen to our guests. Sometimes they put me to sleep. But <laughs> you absolutely were totally, absolutely, you know, how narcissistic of me because you and I think alike, except you're intelligent. Um, <laughs> no, but I believe in everything you're saying. I really, you you know the truth and you're no, telling it. it. You know, we're all, we're all. We're all in a world right now where if we can all come together, like you said, in a positive direction and literally listen to somebody and really and see, because we're in a world right now where people are not showing up fully. They're not showing up with their truth, but it's got a morality behind it. And you have morality. And, and that's what's the that's what's going to change this world is morals coming back to people and responsibility. I wish to morals. I wish you got to love it. And all right, using so some intellect. <laughs> Some brain. So you guys follow him on Twitter too at the Leo Kingdom and and David we'll see you soon. Thank you so hey, much. David. Bye bye. bye. What a Love pleasure. Adios to you my friend. Yay. What a pleasure to have